it's another teaching tip with me Sally Cathcart. Welcome back. We're continuing our theme of repertoire rich and I had a really good question as a result of last week's um, Facebook live which was from Laura. Laura Budgel, thank you so much Laura. And she was asking you know would I have a harder piece for a student to learn going on longer alongside these easier pieces and yes the answer is I can often do that and I wanted to give you a, an example so I've got a young student at the moment and he started before Christmas and this was with a different teacher he started on this piece which is um, Hassler Ecusses in G which at the moment is on the ABRSM grade 2 syllabus it is a very popular piece and that's because it's a great piece His, here it starts <laughs> and chirpy and chipper and of course it's it's got lots and lots of learning points um, that uh, we can we can use so if I'm going to get a student to learn this as part of the 30 40 piece challenge whatever you're doing then they would know that they're on a learning journey with this and the aim would be to get it to 7 out of 10 as a starting point but then eventually we'll go on and we'll refine it further. I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm just going to talk about starting off um, learning a piece of music like this that is really at where the student is, yes? It's not going to be easy for them. It's not so hard that they can't learn it, but they are going to have to spend some time on it. And I think there's a few key things that you can do to make learning a piece easier for a student. And the first thing that I always do is I give them a discovery sheet. I introduce them to the piece, I play it through to them, and I'll tell you more about that later. But um, we all have a general, they all have a, what we call a general discovery sheet. Let me take that out of the plastic, much easier to see. And this is um, teachers who are part of our community, the Curious Piano Teachers community, will uh, know that that's available. It's a general discovery sheet. And this has questions like, what key is the piece in? Clue, look at the time signature, uh, look at the key signature in the very last note. What accidentals does the piece have? And that often brings up really interesting questions. And the idea is to get the student to look at the music and to find their way around it themselves. You know, how many bars does the piece have? Really, really easy question. But it's a good one to look at and um, it then says so that's the question they have to write the answer and then which bars are exactly the same as bar one for example and in this piece there aren't that many um, that are exactly the same in fact there are none but there are two that are exactly the same but an octave lower another interesting point to note so the discovery sheet might take them a couple of three weeks to run through completely. Whilst they're doing that though, I'll be trying to um, build up their listening, their ability to hear the piece in their head. Because thinking in sound, I'm, I'm coming across this and being reminded of it frequently at the moment. Unless we can think the piece in sound, we cannot play it. We certainly can't play it with ease and we certainly can't play it with fluency and with musicality. So I want the students to be able to think the piece in sound. They'll still be doing their note reading because they're doing the discovery sheet, but I need them to be able to look at that and hear what's going on. So I'm going to be doing this this afternoon with this young student that I've got learning it. And he is, we're doing quite a lot of work on the moment on tonic and dominant. So how would I start with that? Well, first thing I'll do is get him to play the scale. And at the moment, the way they're playing their scales is with the long tonic and adding the tonic and the dominant at the end. So like this. G, D, G. I, I, 
the lesser names are fine, but have something from the previous one before that, the tonic or the dominant, the do or the so, and ideally all of them. So we've got the idea of the do, so, do, it's a little low there, so they might want to be do, so, do, far too high for me. And then we're going to play a little game. So I'm going to play through the piece to them, and I'm going to do a skeleton of the left hand where I'm just really going to pick out the tonic and the dominant harmony. So this means you, the teacher, have to have thought about that yourself. You know, most of the piece is generated from a tonic and dominant harmony. It's one of the things that makes us like it so much because it's quite predictable. So um, I might say to them, um, here's the tonic and here's the dominant. When you hear the tonic, wave at me. When you hear the dominant, pat your nose and then back to the tonic, dominant, tonic, whatever. And I'm going to help them, even though I'm just um, playing the piano as well, I'll probably be singing through, let's see, I'm not sure. So it might sound something like this, oh, and we're going to start on the tonic, and on, and why don't you all try it, yeah? When you hear the tonic, do that, and when you hear the dominant, do that, and then change. And you'll hear I'm missing out a lot of notes, really a lot of notes in the left hand, and I'm just giving you the tonic and the dominance. We go. Dominant. Dominant. I'll do that again because I think I messed that up. I started to fill in far too many notes. And again, starting with a tonic. Off we go. Tonic. It's difficult to do that, think about what I'm doing and do it live on Facebook. So you get the general idea though of what's going on. And in doing that, they are building up in their head their ability to hear the piece so that when they look at it, they can think it in sound, they can hear it without having to go directly to the piano because this is the, the, the magnet, mm. if you like, that sets up all sorts of tension. So this is the beginning of the learning journey for this piece. And if you're interested, I'll return again, if not next week, then maybe um, in subsequent weeks and tell you a little bit more about the other ways I could work on the piece with a student as part of their repertoire rich challenge. Uh, and yet it's a longer process. If you've got any other questions about repertoire rich piano studio, then drop them in the in the notes below, comments below even, and uh, I'll see if I can answer them. In the meantime, big thanks to Laura for asking that one, and happy teaching. See you soon. Bye-bye.